I don't know much about blockchain, and uh, I can do 3D printing. So I'll, I'll probably talk a little bit about immune oncology, uh, genomics, precision medicine, and, and a little bit of uh, artificial intelligence. OK, here's my topic. Um, uh, it's AI prediction of neoantigens and uh, cancer immunotherapy. Uh, the company, uh, as we are talking about one year old, is called Geno Immune Therapeutics. It's, uh, it's founded last year. It's actually a BGI, uh, Huada Gene company. Uh, uh, so we are focusing on uh, cancer therapeutics while the rest of the BGI uh, is doing all sorts of things, mostly on uh, uh, diagnostics. So just give a little bit of background. Um, so cancer immunotherapy is a very hot topic in these days. Um, uh, so uh, in our, uh, in this specific topic, we're talking about uh, tumor-specific uh, mutations, uh, which uh, uh, can be recognized by the human immune system as a non self, so generate an immune attack to the uh, tumor cells. Uh, in the past few years, uh, this is a very recent technology. Uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, technology being adopted in clinical uh, uh, testing has shown that uh, uh, TSAs, tumor specific antigens, uh, if you uh, use that to treat uh, uh, tumors, uh, it gener generates a very uh, promising result. And last year, there are two nature papers, just a few months back, um, has been published. And uh, it's a very new field. There's no uh, clinical trials uh, based on this uh, has been um, down in China. Uh, uh, by the way, all of our uh, clinical studies are down in China. Uh, so, just some basic concept. Um, uh, th 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 that's a whole field called adaptive immune therapy. So, basically, take uh, patients' own uh, immune system and to uh, to uh, culture and expand the cells, inject back to fight cancers. There are um, this has no pointer, so I'll probably will walk down here. So there are several uh, different types of uh, uh, adaptive immune therapy. Um, in the past few years, maybe the past 10 years, um, there are some applications using non-specific uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. Those are nature killer cells. Um, and basically, some, uh, some uh, immune cells, they have uh, uh, cancer killing uh, uh, properties, but they are not very specific. So what, what we do in this talk, I'm going to um, focus on this uh, called uh, neoantigen specific uh, expansion. Basically, we, uh, we sequencing the gene of the tumor and uh, uh, grab the, uh, the mutations caused by the tumor and using this to stimulate uh, immune cells to, uh, to fight the cancer. And there's another big group of uh, genetically engineered uh, T cells. So these are females, uh, CAR Ts or TCRTs. Uh, basically, you, you take T cells out and uh, uh, genetically add a, a uh, receptor to the T cell, and which, after culturing, in, infuse back to the patient to fight cancer. So again, I'm going to talk about uh, antigen-specific uh, uh, therapeutics. Uh, so for us, um, um, well, basically there are three steps for the therapeutic. First, we need to sequence uh, the patient and patient uh, cancer tissues. Uh, there's a variant calling. I need to be very fast. We, uh, we sequence the uh, patient uh, whole exome. Uh, to get the mutations and, uh, and uh, deletions, or, uh, et cetera. Uh, the second step is uh, artificial intelligence-based um, uh, antigen prediction. So we compare with uh, database values and use our own algorithm to predict where the mutations are going to be and which mutation is likely to be a new, new antigen. And the third step, of course, is based on these uh, new antigens, we, uh, um, we culture T cells, expand them, and then infuse back to the patient for therapeutics.
uh, this is the overall uh, time scheme, uh, how, what we do. So uh, at the beginning, we take samples from the patient, uh, which is uh, a pair of samples. Uh, a tumor tissue contains the, the tumor mutation, and usually we take some normal tissue. Um, most of the time, it's, uh, it's blood. So uh, we then uh, sequence both tissues to get uh, the patient-specific genome and uh, uh, also tumor variation, tumor mutations. And uh, after the library and uh, uh, by, uh, uh, analysis, by the way, for those non-biologists, um, uh, so we need to do one, one step called HLA typing. Um, so that's uh, for immunologists, it makes sense. I have some figures later on, maybe explain that a little more. Uh, basically, we don't, uh, uh, we are not only need the mutation information, we need to have the information of a patient's immune background. Uh, because the immune background and mutation are interactive, so we need to know both to make the predictions. After that, we do bioinformatics analysis, which is an AI-based prediction. Um, it usually take a day or so. Um, then uh, we will pull out a, a pool of um, potential candidates, uh, neoantigens. Uh, usually we synthesize 10 to 20 uh, the neoantigen peptides. We use, use, use these peptides to uh, stimulate uh, uh, dendritic cells and T cells to get expansion of the immune uh, active uh, T cells. Uh, then we inject back. The total process um, is roughly uh, 35 to 40 days from the early on to injection. Um, that's the HLA typing I just uh, briefly go through. We, we do a uh, Sanger-based uh, sequence of patient HLA because the location loss uh, is very specific. And after a short sequence, uh, we'll know the phenotype and the uh, um, uh, immune background of the patient. Uh, after that, uh, or simultaneously, we do whole axon se uh, uh, sequencing. Uh, we usually do very deep, uh, 500 uh, uh, coverage of uh, sequencing, and do uh, a very fast alignment to the, uh, uh, to the human genome background to get the, uh, both patient background information and tumor mutation information. After those uh, uh, data, uh, the sequence data, we use uh, primarily two uh, software tools. Uh, one called Mutat to detect the tumor specific mutations. And uh, the other one is called Adicosomatic uh, to detect uh, uh, deletions and insertions, which is also a big part of uh, neoantigen. Uh, this um, is our, our our route of what what do to uh, what we do to uh, get uh, the variants of the genome. Uh, well, we basically get the raw data clean and get the article BAM uh, format, and then branch into two sites to detect both the mutations and the uh, insertion deletions. And um, uh, Mrs. Lee is one uh, leading this effort. Uh, then uh, the prediction part uh, is uh, uh, consists of four different steps. We need to predict uh, expression, uh, and uh, I'll just go a little bit. The protein uh, with mutation will, will get uh, ex expressed, then gets processed. Usually, some enzyme will cleave at a certain site to cut into uh, cut the protein into pieces. And the, the peptide will be further transported by a protein called TAP, uh, transported from cytoplasm to a um, to a vesicles. And this vesicles within this vesicles there will be uh, MHC binding. MHC the receptor binds all the mutations. Uh, is is forced from the binding then presented to the surface of the cell. So those four steps uh, we need to all uh, all consider and. Uh, uh, balance uh, 
uh, all the uh, all, all the factors. Um, last year, we published a paper on gig science, um, uh, a software, uh, basically a group of a collection of software uh, called the PSS MHC Pen. Um, Basically, um, I talked a little bit. So we use um, our predict peptide and uh, our sequence the HLA alley. This is the patient immune background. We use those two groups of data and use our software to predict uh, the uh, neoantigen. And the software is trained by public databases on the top. Uh, the AR lear learning is still in process, but we already get uh, some pretty good data. <coughs> um, we're not the only one who, who do this uh, protection, uh, um, prediction. Uh, there are some other softwares uh, at the bottom. Uh, we did uh, a series of comparison against, and those are different immune background of the patient. So our software, we think, is uh, 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 predicting very well the success, uh, uh, success rate is uh, comparable or high. Uh, the third step, after we get the um, peptide or the neoantigen, uh, first we synthesize them, we physically get the peptide. Now then um, we uh, stimulate uh, the dendritic cells, which are those we cells with some spikes, they will actually bind the peptide and present to the surface. So those presented peptides, those cells, these dendritic cells with uh, uh, presented peptide, which is called um, being activated DC cells, uh, they will uh, further stimulate T cells to activate T cells. And then the T cell will uh, form um, a cytotoxic uh, effect and attacked uh, uh, tumor cells. So we just have some numbers. We have very high DC uh, positive rate, and we have a good uh, TSA CTL um, percentage. Um, after all these theoretical and experimental uh, uh, work, um, we feel the technology is mature enough, uh, so we tried on a clinical settings. Uh, this is a clinical trial trial set up last year uh, in Guangzhou, China, in Sun Yisen University Cancer Center. Uh, Dr. Zhang is the PI for the uh, for the trial. Uh, we are testing on um, uh, melanoma. And the, uh, the enrollment condition for the uh, patient is very harsh. It actually, pretty much the patient field all conventional treatment. Uh, if uh, we're in the uh, field of cancer, uh, we all know that melanoma is a very severe case and it, it progress rapidly and uh, uh, prognosis is very poor. So uh, here are just uh, some examples. We have um, uh, two patients uh, here. Uh, those are the peptides predicted and with some predicted affinity. Those are in animal, animal value of this peptide. And uh, we synthesize this peptide and do this stimulation process. Um, so far we have tested uh, six patients so far. Those are uh, number five to six patients. Uh, those are uh, some of the uh, minor side effects. So our initial clinical trial is mostly monitoring the side effect. Uh, uh, there's no severe or toxic effect, and some minor itching, uh, some uh, ulcer, uh, some minor effects may happen. Uh, some of the case result, we have two patients has shown uh, very promising results, and this is the case number four. Uh, you can see the uh, there are the uh, has the patient has multiple uh, loss of tumors. Uh, this one loss is uh, 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 actually a clinical see a little uh, redu reduction, but on the figure this is uh, comparable. These are uh, two and a half months apart, and this is another uh, another loss. This and there, uh, you can see a significant, a significant reduction of the, uh, of the lesion. And uh, the same patient, uh, multiple lesions, and this part you see a, 
uh, almost uh, all removal of the lesion. Uh, that's the number five. It has similar effect, but it's just one loss. So we, out of five patients, we have seen two have significant, uh, uh, have uh, good effect out of the, uh, out of the treatment. Uh, uh, we all know this is a very early stage, so we are continuing our basic research. Um, we definitely need more data. Uh, you know, for all the people who are in uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, we all know that uh, the learning training set is very crucial. Uh, we know we don't have enough. And uh, our clinical uh, trials mostly in China, so we're uh, focused on Chinese populations. Uh, these are uh, a leak frequency of Chinese populations. Uh, basically, these are uh, immune uh, background of, of the patient. Um, but the training data are only available uh, with a few of the early uh, background. So what we are doing is to, uh, in the lab, we are generating a, uh, a few monolithic cell lines. So basically generate a few of the pure immune background. Those cell lines, we basically use the CRISPR knockout, the initial background, and knock in uh, the pure allelic uh, background. Uh, then with this pure cell line, we um, call uh, immune uh, precipitate the cell line with uh, a sort, all sorts of uh, peptide. So this thing will, will grab the peptide, the antibody uh, call IP with this is the receptor and the peptide. We'll purify the peptide to make a, uh, a mass back identification. We have software to identify the sequence of the peptide. So basically, this is a systematic uh, procedure where generating uh, additional large quantity of, uh, um, of this data. So those uh, allelic uh, data with uh, peptide affinity. Um, so we're also doing other things. I, I just point out that other uh, cancer types that we're testing, we're also testing with uh, dendritic cells as a vaccine. And we're also uh, uh, designing DNA, RNA vaccines for all cancer uh, treatment. And this is the team. Uh, we have a, this is the clinical, this is the development team. We have a research team of uh, 50 people didn't put on this. And uh, those three people are uh, doing mostly informatics and prediction, uh, arti artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, Dr. Cheng Xi Chao is a biologist. Uh, Dr. Ming Ming Liu is a clinical uh, scientist uh, doing clinical trial ma uh, uh, management. A research group in Florida. We found that when the original cell, like a uh, stem cell, grew, they need a kind of small peptide to glue these cells together. So the stem cell can develop as a tissue. But if uh, uh, the glue, the small peptide uh, is missing, the cells will keep growing, grow, grow, and become a cancer cell. I just wonder what, what, what's the mechanism involved here. Because I asked this question to a Stanford professor who is uh, specialized in cell, between cell communication, he didn't know what happened. So what, 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 what could be happening? Okay. Why the cell, uh, without uh, this glue, they will develop as a cancer cell? That's a gene mutation or something else? Uh, I don't know the answer specifically. Um, uh, generically, um, the, uh, the, the cell, uh, all the stem cells, uh, will have a lot of receptors on the, on the surface of the cell. And the, uh, the cell, in order for the cell to develop uh, properly, you need to have a proper uh, receptors to be stimulated. So those, uh, my guessing would be those peptides would be the proper uh, stimulant uh, for the stem cell development. And, uh, although what we are talking about here, those peptides are not, um, are not those uh, uh, receptor uh, ligand. Those are more, uh, uh, immune system, you those peptide to detect whether it's self, yourself, or foreign. 
So when you recognize a peptide as a foreign body, then the immune system will begin to attack. So those are two different. Those are identification peptide. The one you're talking about are more uh, a signal peptide. I'm not sure whether that's answer your question.